Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pastoral Thoughts Podcast. And this is your host, Jack Young. And we have got uh, Pastor John Major, our associate pastor here, and then also Evangelist Paul Ionella. I always want to call you Linella because the I looks like an L I know it does. on your prayer card. Yeah. And, um, and so, but uh, he preached for us last Sunday, did a tremendous job. We had a great day uh, in the house of the Lord. Amen. And I uh, appreciate you uh, filling in for us and preaching. I've had a bunch of people preaching for me the last couple of weeks because we had a friend day with Bruce Fry. Then we had tent revival. And then we had you preach. And there was a lady that got saved on friend day. And uh, her name's Kim. And I saw her yesterday at the grocery store she works at. And she says, now, when am I going to get to hear you preach? <laughs> and I said, well, be careful what you wish for, because I don't have anybody uh, else scheduled till that's October. Right. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to be saying, why don't we get to hear somebody else preach? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, thanks for uh, preaching for us Sunday. And uh, t- tell us a little bit about those, the two messages that you preached and how they came apart, uh, came together. You have came apart. Um, <laughs> the first Brooke, message was the Brook uh, of take Kid, it to the brook. Kidron. Take it to the Brook. Take it to the Brook. Yeah, that was a message that uh, the Lord laid on my heart as I kept coming across that thing, and He would not allow it to go away, no matter where I was reading in Scripture. Brook Kidron came up, and uh, even in the New Testament, um, and I just wanted to research what it was all about. And when I when I saw that. It's where they took all the refuse, all the garbage, all the filth. I said, all I could think of is what happened to me on my salvation day. You know, I took it to the brook. And uh, from there, obviously, Christ started to grow my ministry. And, um, yeah, it was a fabulous sermon. And uh, different times of Israel's revival, they would cleanse the temple and take all the rubbish and burn it and put it in the book. Kidron. Yep. Kidron. How do you say Kidron? I say Kidron, but I don't know. Maybe it's Kidron. Yeah. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> Something like that. Um, in in the Temple Mount there, too, there's a massive cisterns. Like in the in the, in the springtime when all the water would run off the hills, yeah. they would uh, had a, this amazing ability to collect the rainwaters into giant, giant cisterns. And so there was a huge amount of cleanup with all the sacrifice, this, uh, sacrificial system, all the animals being sacrificed. And so all the refuge would flow down the brook Kidron. You said something about it being black. Yeah, it means black or the word Kidron. It's from the, the means black or uh, gloomy brook. And it's from the blood, you know, the, the blackish dried blood. The riverbeds are stained because of the, the blood. And then um, um, the Lord crossed over Kidron, right, went in to the Mount the of Olives to pray. Uh, Kidron, another connection there, too, is uh, the Valley of Trophet. Mm-hmm. Um, in Hinnom, it was uh, the city dump, example of hell. Yeah. And, uh, you, know, another, you know, another word for hell in the Bible, the Valley of Trophet is supposed to be the Valley of the Drum, and that's where they would go down to uh, Kidron, and they would... Um, sacrifice their babies to Moloch. Yeah. And Trophet, the drum, they would pound the drum to drown out the sound of the screaming. infants screaming oh, there. And it was a picture of, yeah, hell, your old life. Um, and, yeah, and it, they talk about Sunday every once in a while in your Christian life, like the children of Israel, you long for the garlics, leeks, and right. onions of Egypt, and yeah. you go back to Kidron and yeah. and pick up some rubbish. Make a withdrawal. And mm-hmm. then on a Sunday morning, too, um, you made the comparison to uh, the Apostle Paul counting all things but dung. Yeah. <laughs> and and he, yeah. he talked about when you sit on the toilet, yeah. and you don't say, oh, I'm going to miss you. You were a part of <laughs> I thought that, yeah, was really, with that, that for sure. was That was really funny. <laughs> And so, yeah, your former things you should count, but don't. That's right. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That was great. That was a great message. Uh, and then uh, Sunday night, mm-hmm. you preached on the altar. Yeah. How, and how did this message come about? Um, well, when we see Adonijah and we see Joab running to the altar and grabbing hold of the horns, I uh, sought that out and studied that out. Why did they grab hold of those horns? And it was a place of mercy, seeking mercy from God. And, you know, all I could think of was, you know, how many times I've come to the altar seeking mercy from God and uh, how important to me the altar 
in my personal Christian life, how important the altar has been to me. It may not be important to everyone. And like I even said in that message, there is no scripture and verse that says we have to come to an altar. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a tradition that we men have set up, as you said, you know, Charles Finney first did it and then D.O. Moody and Billy Sunday and, you know, great preachers in the past have used the altar, but it, it has been significant Mm -hmm. in my life. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. yeah, and historically, uh, God has used it, and then historically in your life, historically in mind, that chance to respond yes. to the preaching of God's word. Yes. We just heard it, and I always tell people too, like if they're if they're even if they're reading their Bible at home, uh, and the Lord speaks to you, you better speak back. Absolutely, mm-hmm. and uh, that altar really, can be any place. Yes, and that altar is an opportunity to uh, talk to the Lord about the things that you have heard. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I just, uh, you know, I thought about how many times I've sat in church, listened to a great message, and uh, said, that doesn't apply to me. And, you know, it hit me that it doesn't apply to you because you're not applying it. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) Yeah. And if somebody's opening up the word of God. Right. Uh, there is something in that portion of scripture for you. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, well, oh, tell us a little bit about your background. Oh, uh, how far back? Well, you got saved in 1984. Yes, sir. And, um, you were a bodybuilding engineer. Yes, sir. Bouncer. Yes, sir. Drinker, you're gonna say drinker, that, you're gonna say the word you again. Were, you were, the you, playpen, the playpen, <laughs> known as the playpen preacher. Yeah, <laughs> bounced at the playpen and uh, got saved. Got walking with the Lord, 1984. Um, and then, then you, um, when did you get into the ministry? I entered the ministry in 1994. Okay, ten years later. Mm-hmm. And uh, now, when did you start your church down in Tennessee? In 1996. 1996. And you pastored that for how long? 22 years. And then you turned it over to your son. My son pastor has pastored it since 2018. And then you got into evangelism. Yes, sir. So, um, and, and Brother Ionel has been on this podcast before, and I think we got into detail about your... Um, about just your your testimony you told a little bit of your testimony on sunday morning yeah awesome testimony but we were going to ask you just uh some stuff about evangelism sure i thought the first question is um how did you know that uh, god wanted you uh to to be in evangelism to travel in evangelism how did you go from um you know from pastoring a church that you'd started you pastored for 22 years uh into evangelism how did this all come about well there were a couple couple things um one, uh, I could see what the Lord was doing in my son's life. He had been my assistant for six years, and I could see some really strong qualities in him that I believed the next generation in our church really would have um, profited by. Mm-hmm. So uh, not to say that he's the reason that I left. I was also uh, had a great... Uh, desire to want to help younger pastors. I was meeting a lot of them, a lot of younger pastors, a lot of younger missionaries would come through our church and with young families. And um, uh, I didn't really see a way to be able to help them Mm -hmm. in the position I was currently in. I was, I was obviously being what I needed to be for my church, but I couldn't help others the way I wanted to help them. And then at the, again, at the same time, saw my son, the Lord, you know, is if he's moving one out, he's moving one in, mm-hmm. you know? So oh, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would be a big part of the sign of God moving you on. Is sure. like you have somebody right there in the wings who's got what it takes to, to take over Absolutely. The, the work right. in the ministry. Absolutely. What happened to you pastor, didn't it? Well, um, somewhat when you moved, God filled the pulpit so. before I before I came here, and that's, this was um, yeah, that was an act of faith. Um, and before I moved here, we had voted in the pat the next pastor to take my spot, and he, and he had the credentials, he had the background, the ministry experience. He had twenty years full time uh, ministry as an associate, former um, military background, saved when he was in the army, and he's taken over a military church, uh, which 
he knew what he was getting into when he went there and mm-hmm. um, that, that type of a thing. But, um, yeah, and I probably um, – do you think your burden for helping – Younger guys comes from your own struggles at the beginning of the, of the ministry. Oh yeah, my, my you, you think I need I need to help guys out? Oh yeah, I I don't <laughs> go around telling people uh, what I did right. I tell them what <laughs> I did wrong. Don't make this mistake and <laughs> yeah. don't make that mistake. Learn from Try, my mistakes. Trust me, I made yeah, I made. Those <laughs> oh ones. my goodness, amen. And I could list you know so many of them. And, and thank God, my son learned from my mistakes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you know he's doing it differently. And I praise God for it. Mm. Yeah, amen. Um, so you so you think of your former self and uh, trying to get in the ministry and all these things, that, and um, you want to be a mentor to people out there. I do. So you think one of your big roles in, in, in an evangelist is actually ministering to pastors? Yes, sir, absolutely. And the Lord has opened doors for me. I mean, you know, I've been in business for years, engineering business and all the rest, and traveled the world. So, I mean, I know how to get in a door. I know how to knock. I know how to get in. But I really have wanted the Lord to open the doors where he wants me to go, when he wants me to go, what he wants me to say. And um, he's been taking me to a lot of brand new churches. Mm -hmm. I mean, even Brother Gonzalez the Mm -hmm. other night, he says, Brother, do you think do you have any openings in your schedule where you could come by? And he goes, but I have to tell you, I, we only have 20 people. I said, <laughs> you know, yeah. I've been to churches that have five people, right? you know, Amen. and, and just want to be an encouragement. Amen. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, what question you have, brother Jonathan? Well, yes. How you got into evangelism. How do you think that um, your mindset shifted? after you got into evangelism, because obviously pastoring and evangelism are two completely different things. Totally different. Um, and uh, I was talking with a pastor earlier just about um, the the role of a pastor or even an, a youth pastor. Um, you know, you have the time, the continuity to see people grow and change. And, um, you know, you see the, the word take effect over a length of time. Whereas an evangelist, you're there for a day, two days, a week, and then you're gone. And then personally, I know one of the things that I enjoy the most is the personal growth I get from being forced to, you know, prepare for something fresh every week. And I know, um, you know, as an evangelist, you know, you do prepare sermons, obviously, um, but, you know, you can reuse things. And, and so wh- what did that look like? Was that a shock to you when you first changed and you first moved into that role? And uh, is there anything that you miss about being a pastor? And Oh, sure. Yeah, there's there's things I miss about being a pastor. Um, obviously as a pastor, you, you are there with your people on a weekly basis, right? But I, I will say this, you know, think about your grandparents when you were a kid and they hadn't seen you in six months and then they see you again Mm -hmm. and they say, Oh my goodness, how you've grown. Right. You know? And that's why I said what I said about your church Mm -hmm. from when I was here a year ago, Mm -hmm. I came back and I could really see the growth. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. versus if I was here every week, it may not have been right. so noticeable. Yeah, because your, your own right. kids, you can't no. tell. Like, yeah, right. they see grandma, grandpa. Oh, right. wow, you're so right. big. So, yeah. so you still get that just on a different scale. Exactly. Right. And and now, rather than my focus being on individuals, because I'm not pastoring, mm-hmm. um, I, I really focus on the message. Right. Very much so. Um and I want it to be something that people will remember forever. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I remember when, like I said about that message I heard from Joe Mandrino, somebody better go find Jesus. Mm-hmm. That was 1986. Stuck with you. Yeah. Yeah. Just stuck yep. with me. Um, and, you know, through the years, <clears throat> one of the other things I've learned is I'm in nobody's camp. I'm not a campite. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Nobody's camp. Uh, I I got tremendous blessings as a young Christian listening to Adrian Rogers and Charles Stanley, mm-hmm. you know, Southern Baptist preachers. Right. Um, so I'm in I'm in nobody's camp. I just want to make sure that that message is something that is remembered. Uh, Brother Jim and I don't know his last name here at your church came up and says, man, I remember that message you preached last year. Jim Caterley. Oh, yeah, yep, yep. Yep. On Acts 16. Mm -hmm. He said, I remember that message. Man, that message changed my life. And then 
that's what I want to do. So, right. so Amen. now as an evangelist, I focus more on the message. Um, Would you say moving into that role of evangelism made you a better preacher? Because again, I think you know, I've heard you preach three times, and I don't, I've remembered every single one, which is saying something because the other one was a couple yeah. years ago, yeah. a year ago. So would you say that it's given you, it's freed you up a little bit to focus more on the preparation of your sermon instead of being yes. so dis- distracted with yeah. other things? And, and there's no doubt, you know, and as a pastor, uh, yes, you have to come up with fresh material every week. Mm-hmm. And I have a lot of respect for pastors. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, my message is now, I, and I always do this, after I preach a message, I go back and I tweak it. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. And tweak it and yeah. tweak it and tweak well, it. I don't think there's ever been a time. See, I, I can sleep well, like, the night before. Like, I preach, like, Saturday. I sleep fine. Yep. Yeah. But Sunday night is harder because I have replay going. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Did I really say that? You know, because you're, you're literally. Well, and then you're the, mourning because you and, got this great thought and you and can't you tweak fr- it. You can never yeah. use it again. Or you had a perfect illustration and you forgot, forgot it. it. Yep. Yes. Yep. yes. You Where, think, well, put that behind me. I got to yeah. move on to next week. That's yeah. right. The last revival I did down in Georgia. Um, I had forgot the, I mean, you know, there's the grand finale, the final point <laughs> and I'd forgotten it. And the pastor got up and he was talking to the people going to get ready to close and prayer. I raised my hand, pastor, pastor, do you mind if I say one more thing? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I think we all do that at night. Like you said, God, can I say one more thing? I just got to try and get that in one more time. Get a time machine, go back. And what the evangelist uh, essentially does have a time machine that can redo. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is a blessing. It and, is. And they, sh- they should. You know, I think that, you know, if you were in evangelism, uh, you should have, you know, 12 uh, messages or however that are like polished, ready to go meet different I- issues. Yeah. Now, the advantage that you have, which I, you know, we have, we had uh, John Jenkins preach a revival. He's a pastor and he preaches out. Um, but different evangelists that we have had here, like yourself, the ones who I think are the, the biggest blessing to the people and the most beneficial are guys who have pastored before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then also I would think um, not only like as having been a pastor or shepherd, I think that pastor shepherds are like more sensitive to the people at that congregation. Cause I've known evangelists that like, do not want to talk to anybody. They'll right. go behind right. the pulpit and then they want to get out the door. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, but I would think also you being kind of a counselor and a mentor to pastors, you wouldn't be able to have that role if you had not done what they're doing. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I agree. It, I think it would be very difficult to try and be a blessing to a pastor to fill the needs that he has in his life. If I've never pastored. Amen. Mm-hmm. Right. Do, do you think that um, more guys should, should be getting into evangelism? Do you think there's a need for that? Well, this is one of the areas that uh, I either question or have a concern about, and that is I see more and more pastors leaving their pulpits to act as evangelists and, you know, going around the country preaching at other churches. Um, and I'm not saying right, wrong, or indifferent. I mean, the Bible says do the work of an evangelist. Um but I guess um, it would it I would think because I did not do that as a pastor. Mm-hmm. Did I ever get asked to preach? Yeah, yeah, once in a while, but it was it was rare. It wasn't and, and you, a weekly. Yeah, thing. and you weren't looking for it. No, yeah, no, 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 no. And it, it wasn't a weekly thing by any means. Maybe once or twice a year. Maybe when I was on vacation and a, you know a friend asked me to come in and preach. But I would have to think that there would be a divided. Uh, affection divided. You only have so many resources, right? Sure. You only have right. so yes. much energy. So, right. I mean, how are you going to split that thing up? Mm-hmm. And if God's called me to pastor, mm-hmm. it's over a, a local congregation, sheep, and um, you know, so so that makes it a little bit difficult for the evangelist that's trying to go out there sure. because pa- you know there's a lot of pastors that are doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, then the other thing that makes it a little difficult these days is the internet. So these 14 or 20 sermons that you're talking about, yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody's already heard them. It's, it's, <laughs> our, it's, it's, our, it's already uploaded. And I, yeah. I, went to, I was going to preach a, for a, uh, another pastor. Um, I won't say names or places, but uh, I was going to preach a particular message. And 
he says, you know, we were just talking on the phone. He goes, man, I heard that message that you preached at brother so-and-so's. Man, that was good. And he goes, I've already preached it to my people. <laughs> it's, it's a good thing. Uh, it's a good thing he told you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or his people be hearing the same message again. Oh, man. And they thought you plagiarized them. When it that's was right. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah, that's so, cute. That's yeah. funny. So huh. sermon audio is not my best friend. No, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. Um, you know, in in the Bible, um, the pre, the Levitical priesthood, you might know this, I think it was 50 years old when they stopped working in the, was it 50? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, 50 years old. And then they went into training younger men. Yes. And I've often thought that about um, pastors, that um, they're probably a lot more to consider, you know, when, once they hit 60 or something like that, possibly turning their church over and then going into some sort of a role like as unto you, um, you know, either traveling in evangelism or working at a Bible college. I, I want to say some of the best teachers I had at Bible college were guys who had put their time in yeah. as a pastor for decades and done so successfully. Now they're taking the tools and the trade that's, and training yeah. younger men. To, that's exactly to what that role. I did. I turned it over at age 60. And one of the things that also um, caused me to greatly consider that it, my time was done. Uh, Sam Gipp mm-hmm. had said, sent out a newsletter. And in his newsletter, he said that a pastor will draw people plus or minus 10 years of his own age. Mm-hmm. Sure. So if I'm, you know, you know, so if I'm 60, I'm going to draw 50 to 70. Mm-hmm. Um, and I could see where our church was going. And my son, you know, he's 32 years old now. Mm-hmm. And uh, what a, you know, powerful young man he is. Uh, and I, you know, it was just time. I just yeah. felt it was time. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, Mom. You got a question, John? Uh, yeah, it's just an observation. And so the last podcast you did with the pastor, you mentioned a lot about um, how your, your, your beginnings in ministry were with the youth, mm-hmm. how that really gave you a heart for the Lord. I just find it interesting. You know, it started off with the youth. Um, you made a statement uh, when you started your church that the best way to reach the youth is to reach the parents. Right. So you started a church and, right. you know, began pastoring. And then as you went into evangelism, your mindset was that you wanted to help young pastors. And you obviously did a good job because your son is pastoring and, you know, you have that, um, you got some wisdom in that area. Um, and so I'm the youth pastor here. And, uh, you know, I, I think that probably the biggest problem spot in our churches today are young people there's a huge attrition rate people are just you know they get to 18 and they leave the church and um so my big question uh for you is but what is your maybe in evangelism maybe in pastoring maybe it's just a principle in general um what ideas and principles do you have when dealing with young people how do you get them to love the bible how do you get them to not leave church how, i mean even with your son you know um, obviously there was something he saw in you. Is it example based? Is it something that you, um, just, you obviously have a heart for young people. So I just kind of had a, what is your approach? Towards well, what you people? just said is absolutely the truth. What my son saw in me. Right. Uh, and, and that's what it is. Mm-hmm. The, when I was building a, a, um, youth program in our church, um, uh, they saw a lot of excitement. They right. saw a lot of joy. Um, they saw someone that, you know, I'm the same at home as I am in church. Right. You know, it's, it's not two different people. And I think they, they related to that. You know, one thing about kids, uh, they want something that's real. Right. Right. Genuine. Yeah. Right. They want something that's real. They, and it's, it's got to be, um, true. It's got to be worth wanting to achieve. Right. What they need is that desire. The greatest teacher in the world is desire. Amen. You know, if you have a desire to want to be a good golfer, you're going to be out there every single day right. driving golf balls. Right. If you want to be a good golfer, if you want to be a good fisherman, you'll be out there fishing every day. If you want to be a good Christian, then you'll be doing Christian things every mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that was, I think, what they saw in me. I had the desire to, after one year of moving uh my family from New York to Tennessee. Then I picked my family up and went off to Chattanooga to Tennessee temple, uh, to the seminary down there. And one year later, because they weren't standing on the book, 
One year later, I picked my family up, moved them back to Nashville. I mean, that's a lot of work yep. to move yep. a family, mm -hmm. yep. you know, that many times. And they saw that no matter what the obstacles were that were in front of me, I was going to do whatever was necessary to God came overcome first. it. Right, right, right. I saw your ded dedication and seriousness, your the um, work of the gospel carried gravity. Right. And then also um, your children got to see um, – the gospel working mm -hmm. right when you're planting a church sure and uh, that's one of the reasons why i'm thankful for my childhood i mean I, I got to see you know my dad was a church planner and i got to see people getting saved and lives being changed and families being added to church right. so you get to see like um the elders that went into the to canaan land to mm -hmm. conquer it. they saw all the miracles sure um you know and i want to do the same thing for my kids right you know i want them to see the gospel at work and God changing people's lives and all that stuff. How old was your son when he took the church? He's thir he's 32 he's now. 32, so he would have been, uh, that was 2018, so it was five years ago. So he would have been 27, 28. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And and that's um, that's really young. Yeah, it is. a pastor. Um, yeah. And I, I was an intern pastor when I was 27, and uh, those dear people put up with a lot. <laughs> you know, um, it, and I, I knew, you know, I knew at 27, that, yeah, I'm not uh, quite ready for this yet. I was an intern for a year, yeah. you know, full acting pastor. Yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah, that's exciting for your son it to is. start in. And like I said, he, he learned from all my mistakes. So he said, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, d he definitely was, he had, had an advantage that you never had. Right. Right. As well. Exactly. I didn't have Because not, not only were you pl planting the church, your whole family was planting the That's church. That's correct. It was yeah. a family effort. That's correct. So he already had time served yeah. by the time uh, he started. And one yeah. thing he did get to see in me was that my family came first. Amen. Yeah. And so many, I mean, what was taught to the independent Baptists for years was you just give everything to God and God will raise your family. Mm -hmm. Right. That is not Bible at yeah, all. Yeah, no. Right. Worse than an infidel. Yes, right. And to have denied the faith. Yep. You don't take care of your own family. I know. Yeah. I think you hit on something important there, too. You said he learned from your mistakes, but um, I see a lot of, and I think the tendency is there even when I first started, um, to try to cover up your mistakes in front of young people and try mm -hmm. to act like you don't have mistakes. And mm -hmm. I think it's so big that, um, like you said, being genuine, not just about your love for God, but also the fact that you're fallible. Mm -hmm. Now you make mistakes, and um, that I think that is huge. I think my dad, that's one of the things that I've always appreciated about him is that when he makes mistakes, he owns it. And I've Amen. seen growth in him, mm -hmm. and so that shows me that growth is possible Amen. in me. You know what I mean? Right. So that's big. I mean, it's not just, uh, you know, being uh, pious or whatever. It's also being real about when you don't have everything together. Yeah, and, and I, you know, as I've said so many times, it's not a matter of, uh, whether or not you fall, we're all going to fall. Mm -hmm. It's whether or not we're going to get back up. Amen. Right. And so many people have quit and just walked away from the ministry because it is hard. Pastoring is. is hard. Right. And trying to grow a church in this day and age with the world, the world is spinning out of control oh goodness, mm -hmm. yeah. like a toilet, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? Again, and with the toilet talk. Yeah, more, <laughs> more dung, man, more dung. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you got to flush it down, kid run. Exactly. That's funny. I, I thought when you were preaching that message, yeah, we were in a, have you been to the Holy Land? No. Man, you need to take your I wife. know, I know. Now is the time, too, man. You don't have right. any kids. I or, know. Um, but uh, yeah, we were at, at this Roman Colosseum. It was it was there in Israel. It wasn't in Italy or anything. Um, but they had, of course, again with the cisterns. So the, the toilet seats are still there, and the toilet seats are kind of on a slant. They're, they're, they're square, so you're not like tilted, but it'd be like toilet seat, a little bit higher, toilet seat, toilet seat, toilet seat up. And what it was underneath, there was just a, it was just a stream that they had. There you go. So when you go to the restroom, yeah, yeah it just washes it away out to the, um, out to the um, Mediterranean Sea. It was right along the Mediterranean Ooh. Sea. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> little ki Kidron Valley. Little yeah. Kidron there, <laughs> man-made Kidron. Yeah, not funny. <laughs> okay, I have a question for you. It's really two questions, but it can be lumped together. Uh, so you've been traveling since 2018, and um, so what have you seen in your traveling across the country, just state of the nation, state of churches, things like that, and then what have you learned since you have been traveling? Well, I can tell you this. One thing that kind of surprised me um, was that not everyone is the same. 
<laughs> that surprised you? <laughs> well, I figured if you were going to be a good church, we all have to be the you same. You have to do this one thing. Yeah, you gotta, right. yeah. Right. we all have to use this. Well, one thing I can say is they're all using the same book. That's yeah, a good there thing. You go. But, you know, their style of music, mm-hmm. uh, their, their convictions on dress, yeah. um, uh, the times they worship, mm-hmm. the days they worship, you know, it's all different, and I praise God for that difference. And we have that yeah. liberty that's in Christ yeah. to be able to do that. But it's it's been interesting. You know, you can go out you go out west, and guys come in with cowboy hats and bolos and no ties, and yeah. you know, it's it's just yeah, it's different, and it's uh, it's refreshing to see that anybody can serve the Lord, Amen. regardless of your background. Right. Yeah where you come from. What, um, what were some misconceptions that you might have had about churches before you started traveling? Well. What as far as those well, differences and things like that? Because sometimes you have an idea about what works and what doesn't, and then like you're saying, you, you travel and you go to this this church and they do something some weird way, but it works for them. Or, um, well, it's like myself, we're only going to miss one Sunday this year. And I'll be on vacation, and I'll be at the Stillwaters Baptist Church of uh, Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I already know what I'm going. So that's like the only other church I'll be in on a Lord's Day. So yeah. I don't get the opportunity that you have of right. seeing all these different places and different ministries. And it, it would be nice. Um, I mean, I wouldn't want to, I couldn't miss church, but it would be nice to see it and learn from it. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, that is where... Unfortunately, that's where that message, uh, grab the bull by the horns, came from. Because going across the country, I was able to see churches that no longer have altar calls, Mm -hmm. no longer give people an opportunity to respond. Uh, That burned me, and uh, that's why the Lord gave me that message. I just, you know, uh, but obviously I've been very encouraged to, uh, uh, you know, uh, preaching out in Berkeley, California. I mean, that's... That's not exactly the most conservative yeah, yeah. city no. on earth. No. Uh, that's, you know, second to Sodom and Gomorrah, maybe. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, that make us third, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, just to see that, that people out there, even in a very, very liberal state, in a very, very liberal city right outside of San Francisco, uh, love the Lord. I mean, just Amen. Amen. It, it's good to see, again, another thing that Sam Gipps said, or uh, preached a message once entitled, Something's Gone Right. You know, with all the garbage going on in our world, there's Sh- still a lot. Shocking. Of, there's yeah, some, there's, there's something going some right. Stuff going right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's, so that's in, that's been encouraging for you. Yes, and uh, you know, again, uh, meeting in fire departments, uh, meeting in school libraries, uh, to just to try and help people, and you know, young pastors that. And they stay in touch with me. I, I thank God for that. You know, it's that's one thing that drives me crazy now as a pastor <laughs> or as an evangelist. Mm-hmm. When I write somebody and they don't write me back. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you're just reaping what you sowed, buddy. Yeah, right, <laughs> that's right. true. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. look at that. My encouragement, file 13, file 13. That's right. Yeah. My encouragement to all you pastors out there that one day you may want somebody to return your call <laughs> or your letter right. or whatever. Right. So you better make sure you do it. <laughs> that's funny. Well, kind of along those lines, you were just saying how you're, you're writing guys and guys will reach out to you and you're helping out with church plants and stuff like that. You said that your, your focus going into it was helping young pastors. How, how, like, what is your plan when you get to a church? How are you specifically looking to help the pastor? Is it just through ministering to his people? Is it just through helping the church? Is there something that you're, when you go in, are you looking for, you know, signs of what they might need, how they might need encouragement? Mm-hmm. Like what, what is your, what is your method? On yeah, that, I, I guess. I, it's it's not any cut you know cookie yeah. cutter type thing. Yeah. Um, I learn a, the most by you know going out to lunch with them. To be honest with you, right. we sit there and just talking and hearing about their struggles and and what they're going through. And um, I try to minister to their people how they would like me to minister to them. I right. mean, I want them involved in this. This is their church, right. and really, I'm not ever saying anything. That they haven't already heard. Right. All right. They've heard, there's nothing new under the sun. They've heard it before. I'm just coming in and confirming it. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. It's another coming from voice. another yep. mouth. Yep. It's yep. coming with different illustrations. It's coming, you know, his he combs his hair differently. He talks differently. He he's you know got yep. a, a Yankee got arms. accent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bigger <laughs> arms. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm not there bringing any new revelation. I just want to come in there, and I can remember that as a pastor. I can remember having an evangelist in, mm-hmm. or a guest preacher or whatever, and they'd say something and. That's the same thing I preached like a month ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all your people people said, man, that was amazing. Man, that message. Man, can you believe that (laughs) message? I go, no, not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. amen. It's it's a witness. It is. Yeah, it's a witness. Somebody else coming in saying the same things. And, and uh, you know, proves to the people that their pastor is not the only crazy person out there who believes <laughs> Exactly it, <you> right. <laughs> There's somebody else out there who's traveling the country to, to proclaim it. Exactly. And part exactly. of that ministering probably is even just sitting down with them and listening to them. Because I think a lot of pastors sure. don't have somebody to, like, they don't. go to. They don't. They they don't. Have very, very to, lonely. Yeah. You know who's the loneliest person in the world is the pastor's wife. Yeah, that too. Who does she go to when she has a problem with her husband? Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. I mean, goodness, you know, she can't go to anyone in the church. Right. She doesn't want to ruin his reputation by going to another pastor, or, you know. Right. So, so I thank God for my wife Amen. being oh, with me. Yeah. And my Amen. wife has become very, very good friends with a lot of the pastor's wives. And they, even after that, we that's leave. That's another thing that's very, very nice touch. about you and your traveling in the motorhome is that you get to come with your bride. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, a lot of guys have, you know, they travel all, all by their lonesome. I didn't yeah. know how they do that. <laughs> no. And then... Yeah, and then traveling with your wife, it is that is that witness another compliment. Well, his his wife's on board with him, obviously. Right, <laughs> right, yeah, right. She right, believes right. what he's saying. Right. Um. Yeah, and your wife ministers in song. That's that's a blessing. Beautiful, man. Yeah. 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 She definitely, she adds a lot to the ministry for sure. Let me ask you, um, just uh, some advice on behalf of like some evangelists out there who, or some of you might be considering going into evangelism, um. How how do you schedule your meetings? Mm. Like I said earlier, I do like the Lord opening the door. Um, I had two pastors call me this week wanting to schedule something for 2024. And um, I, I want the Lord to open that door. So wherever he places me, then... Obviously, to make best use of my time, I'll contact other churches. In that area. In that yeah. area. To work regionally. Right, work regionally. But I want the Lord to open the door initially, and then I'll fill in around that. Okay. So, Because I, I, I truly do want to um, be where he wants me to be. He knows what churches are in the most need, right? Mm-hmm. Right. He'd say, this church over here is really doing well. You, you know, this one over here is more like Laodicea. You better get over there quickly. They're ready to die. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, um, you you still do some work on the on the side, some engineering. Um, I still have the engineering company right now. I'm currently trying to sell it. Okay. Some there's a company interested in, in purchasing it, but you know, it's not done yet. Would you say for somebody who like didn't have or did not play their financial cards right, whatever? Would you say that you would set yourself up to be able to financially? Like travel in evangelism? No, <laughs> you did it. Well, because um, I I know evangelists. Um, I have a good friend. He's he's now in the pastorate. Yeah, from evangelism. But I know, like on you know on his best years, and this guy's a hustler. I mean, he he called for eight hours a day if he didn't have meetings. He was a young guy at the yeah. time too, yeah. and with a young family. Um, but he said, you know, on his best years that he would bring in in love offerings like. Fifty four thousand dollars, something yeah. like that, uh, and so you can't no make it. No, you Especially take your expenses nowadays. out yeah. of that. Yeah, and that was not his expenses. Right. And he's most of the time, like he was based out of Pennsylvania, and he's driving around and you know some sort of little rice burner. Yeah, you know, across the country. Yeah, and then he's going to a lot of churches. Like he would, he you know, he's not going to turn down a church because they're small. Right. So he's preaching a lot of smaller churches, right. and and so he might be someplace f- for a whole week, and you know, get um. 300 bucks yeah. or he could be at a big church. <laughs> he was here and uh, he got pittance. I remember really? him saying that cause I called him before I came here and uh, he said, well, I can tell you one thing. He's like, I went there. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah. Wow. And, and um, so, yeah. I mean, and obviously anybody who gets an evangelism, 
unless you're like a TV evangelist, you ain't in it for the money. No, no. you're not in it for the money. And that's one thing my wife and I are right now looking at is how much is this going to cost us mm -hmm. to go from New York here in July over to California, Texas, mm -hmm. Oklahoma, Nevada, Arizona, you know, and then down to Florida. And, and I mean, what's this all going to cost? Uh, will we be able to keep a home? You know, I got to still pay for that home even though I'm not right, there. Right. right. You know, that, uh, <sighs> I mean, you think about getting $2,000 a week in love offerings. You say, well, that sounds good. Mm. 52 weeks, that's $100,000. All right, now, take the fuel out mm. just for that RV. Mm -hmm. Take the fuel out, take the meals, take the campgrounds. The mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> right. And all, yeah, all yeah. It, it, you can't make it. So, and I want to say that if you were getting two grand a week, that is very, very good. Yes, yeah, sir. Absolutely. I know. I mean, that would probably be your best week. Yes. What's funny is I feel like I think a lot of church people have a misconception about evangelists where they think these guys are in it for the money, yeah. for the fame, for the, you know, pizzazz or whatever. And I really, I mean, it's, it's a sacrifice to, to be able to do that. It's not like you're just out there, you know, stealing churches blind. <laughs> you know right. I mean? No. Yeah. And yeah. My wife and I say on a daily basis, we're just gonna have to trust God with tomorrow. Right. You know, sufficient unto the day. Right. Mm -hmm. Take no thought of tomorrow yeah. for tomorrow will take thought of itself. Um, so we just one day at a time. It's good for us. Uh, we've not arrived, and it's causing me to trust him more. Mm -hmm. I have to lean on him more. In the past, I could lean on my engineering business, mm -hmm. but our current administration did a real good job of getting rid of the oil and gas industry. And uh, <laughs> oh, and that's yeah. that's a sector that you worked on. That's what I, sector I was yeah. in. Wow. So, hey, wow. We're, hey, we're taking America back in twenty twenty four. I hope so. I certainly hope so. But, man, they're trying to destroy it before then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that and I, you know, I, uh, when I'm home, I transport RVs. Okay. You know, I pull RVs. Yeah, I remember you saying that before. Yeah, I do. I do that to uh, make a little bit extra. So most likely you would tell an evangelist if you're getting into evangelism is that, um, that they should have some, some sort of other, you know, some sort of tent making uh, capacity. Yes, sir. You bet. Yeah, and even with the RV transporting, I can offload that job to another driver and take a small portion of it. So it's just, I mean, it might be $50 or $100 or something, but it adds up over it's time. Something, yeah. It's something. So if my engineering business, if we're able to one day sell that, that's great. But if not, one day at a time. Yeah, amen. Hey, man. Yeah, yeah, it is what it is. You got anything else, Brother John? Not really. Not really. Not really. Man, I'm full of questions. I don't have any <laughs> I don't have any answers. But um so what's uh what's the next sermon that you're working on right now? Um Lord just laid on my heart uh, as I travel across the US uh, and hear different preachers preach and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. You say, oh, I like that about that preacher, and I like that about that preacher, and, ooh, I wish I could do that. And then mm -hmm. he gave me a message. He said, just be you. Amen. You know, Amen. just be you. He said, I'm, and you know, I put the body together. Yeah. And there's no other Paul Lionello. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't do what I've called you to do the way I've called you to do it, mm -hmm. then there'll be a schism in the body. Yeah, amen. Amen. Yeah, so I'm the, I don't need to be you know, doctor so-and-so or pastor so-and-so or evangelist so-and-so, and this guy tells good jokes, and this guy, you know, mm -hmm. just be Paul Ionello. Yeah, that's good. Amen. Yeah, that that's good for everybody. Yeah. It's good for young young guys especially. I feel like you. it's very easy to you idolize people because of their effect and how they preach. And that's correct. It's good to take things from people, but it's a good reminder. I think, actually, I kind of had the same thought during the tent meeting. It's like, you know, it's very easy to get down on yourself because you deliver a sermon. You think, man, that wasn't the <laughs> way I've thought or you maybe you hear someone else preach something similar and you go man i missed like nine tenths of the meat there um but it's good to remember that like it's not always just the way it's delivered it's it's if it's delivered genuinely and you know as yourself and those are the ones that actually mean you the know most. it's <laughs> it's funny uh sometimes you can preach your heart out and you know no response from the people and other times you can preach what you think is the worst sermon you've ever preached. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit gets involved. Amen. Yeah. There's been times where I, I preach something and I think, man, this isn't 
good enough. It's not what I what I wanted. I preach it and it feels like it fell flat. And you think, man, why why did you have me do that, Lord? That was <laughs> that was terrible. Uh, and then a couple of times, you know, I've done that, and the teen will come a week later and say, hey, you know, they don't usually teens aren't usually the ones that'll tell you that a sermon was good or right, whatnot. So right. you just kind of do it. And a couple of times they've come back and said, hey, that was really good. And you know, it's just encouraging. God says, hey, listen, just do what I said. And you know, it doesn't always have to look good. It doesn't always have to feel good. Um, but well, you have some incredible teens here, let me tell you. Yeah, well, because, I mean, I can't tell you the number of them that came up and appreciated the message amen. sincerely. Oh, Shook my hand, looked me in the face. Not like a typical teenager, yeah. you know? <laughs> looked me in the face and shook my hand firmly. Said, yeah. man, I appreciated that message. Yeah. That, that's good young people. Yeah, no, we were very, very, very blessed. Yes, very, very are. blessed and spoiled. Yeah, we've got some... Uh, Good young people here. Yeah, yeah good parents. <laughs> yeah, Amen. Uh, that'll that'll be that'll preach, man. That'll be a good sermon. Every, yeah. e- everybody's got their um, own story, and they've got their own gifts. They've got their own abilities, and really, we make ourselves miserable when we compare ourselves among ourselves. That's right, yeah, Amen. You know, that's right, Amen, Amen. Hey, well, where can uh, where can folks find you, Brother Paul? Somewhere between New York and California. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, n- not on the interwebs, huh? You're off the grid. Oh no, no, I'm on. Um, yes, I do have a. You have a you have a website, website. or anything? Yes. Okay. It's pressingonministries.org. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can email me. Well, it's funny. I had two people email me. Uh, several people email me for this pulpit committee guidebook. We got a very good pulpit committee guidebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you come across any churches that are forming a pulpit committee. Um, very nice. It was one of the churches here in the state of New York was searching for a pastor and the guy on the public committee, uh, is a former government bureaucrat at, um, Fort, Fort Drum. He had some big purchasing power, but he put together a beautiful guidebook. I mean, with, I won't get into it, but we, we did a whole podcast on it. And then I said, if you would like one of these, we'll send them to you for free. And it's very nice. It was, it was him that generously offered that. Um, but I had, I have two emails in my inbox right now from people requesting that pulpit committee guidebook without an address to send it to. <laughs> oh my! So, so, <laughs> so the respondent say, "Hey, if you give me a mailing address, I will mail you right, one." Right. But uh, yeah, if you ever need if you ever need anything, or if you'd like a free book, I've got a bunch of uh, books that different guys have given me uh, here. But uh, pastor thoughts mail at gmail dot com, or if you if there's one of the guests that you're interested in reaching out to, like Brother Paul here, you can email me, and uh, I'll get a hold of you and and. Uh, and vet you. Make sure you're you're a real person, not Thank you. somebody from Nigeria. Thank you. <laughs> with uh, a fortune they want to give you, if right. you give give them their social security number or whatever. Um, but anyway, well, thanks for being on, brother Paul, and uh, he's pleasure. staying here for another three weeks. No, I'm st- I'm staying permanently now. Okay, oh, that's okay. fine. <laughs> that's good. My RV just loves resident. it out there. It's yeah. really nice. It is nice. It's, so now we have his phone number out there and his actual <laughs> physical address. location. Yeah, if, you need, if you need to catch up with him, he's 48 <laughs> South Estate Drive, yeah. Webster, New York. That'll That's where he'll be. So, But anyway, thanks for being on, and uh, God you. bless each and every one of you, and uh, we will see you next episode. God bless. Thank you so much for watching or listening to the Pastoral Thoughts Podcast. And we'd love to hear from you. Please reach out to us at pastorthoughtsmail at gmail.com. Also, if you want to check out more uh, about our ministry here, you can visit pastorjack.org. I do have a blog that I do write. I'd love to have you as one of my subscribers there. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.